I'm Clint Gilchrist. I'm uh, it's the director of the Museum of the Mountain Man, and we are standing today at uh, New Fork, the New Fork River Lander Trail Crossing Historic Park. Um, so this is where the Lander Immigrant Lander Trail crossed the New Fork River. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about the namesake for the, the Lander Cutoff, uh, uh, Frederick Lander. Uh, Frederick Lander was a railroad engineer uh, in his youth from, from uh, 1840s to 1850s. He was a railroad engineer back east. He was from Massachusetts. Um, when in 1853, when Congress passed the Pacific Railway Act, uh, that was a, a set of SEER surveys that they wanted to try to survey the best route to do a transcontinental railroad. And so they were going to do four surveys, a northern survey, or three surveys, a northern survey, and two, two southern surveys. They decided not to do a, a central survey because John Charles Fremont had already been out and, and given reports about that area. Um, so Frederick Lander was hired as an engineer on that, um, on that railroad survey. It was led by... Um, uh, by the by, the freshly appointed governor of the Washington Territory, Isaac Stevens, uh, George McClellan was on that um, uh, expedition, and so was Frederick Lander. Uh, that's kind of the place Frederick Lander first. He first came west, but also the first place he really made a name for himself. Um, they were out on the railroad survey, and he was a real go-getter. He he didn't let anything hold him back, and he was constantly moving and constantly moving forward, and wanted to go do things. And they were up on the Marias River in uh, Montana, doing a survey up there. And Frederick, they saw a grizzly bear in the distance, and Frederick really wanted to bad go shoot a grizzly bear. So he takes his horse and just rides full speed to go shoot this grizzly bear. He has a pistol with him. This is a percussion cap pistol that he has with him and he goes up to the bear <clears throat> and and while he's doing this all his companions there's three other companions with him they all go in the opposite direction the last thing they want to do is deal with a grizzly bear but he rides up to the grizzly bear and he starts shooting it with bullets and it's not doing much damage he puts all six bullets in it and it doesn't look like the bear is really hurt the bear keeps coming after him so so he's trying to ride away and the bear, the, the guys that are watching this are explaining how the bear's right at the, at the heels of the horse and trying to take him down. And, but he gets away from him and rides back to him. All the time he's yelling to him, come up and come up and bring your guns. And none of them would. So he rides right back to him and says, why aren't you get out there and help me? And they say, we aren't going to touch that thing. And so they give him another pistol and he rides back out there. Same thing, he's circling, the, he, thought, he thought he had fired his bullets too quick, so he's circling the, the grizzly, trying to get better shots. And, and, uh, and it's a real tussle between, he's almost getting caught by the grizzly, but finally by his, by, by his next to last shot and his last shot, he finally kills the grizzly. Uh, they counted the 11 of the 12 bullets that he fired actually were in the, 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 the grizzly. So um, the Blackfoot, the Blackfoot, a uh, guide ended up naming him Kaya, which stands for Grizzly of the Mountain in, in their language. And so from then on, all his guys called him Old Grizzly. And so even though he was only 31 years old at the time, he was Old Grizzly. That's just kind of the nature. The reason we know that story is it was written up in the New York Knickerbocker magazine, which was one of the biggest circulated publications in the country at that time. So before you've got... TV and radio and all that stuff, those, those publications were where, that was the kind of the shared experience of where everybody learned about what was going on in the country. And so he became very famous for that incident. Even before he got home, he became famous. So he, they, they do this railroad survey across to what's now Montana and Idaho and Washington. Uh, and, and Isaac Stevens in charge of it. And Isaac Stevens is the governor of this brand new territory of Washington. And so he decides that that's the best railroad route in the country is to come right on that northern route. And Frederick Lander told him he was crazy. All those mountains they had to cross in Montana and Idaho and Washington was stupid to try to put a railroad through there. And so he had a serious disagreement with Isaac and he figured he needed to get back to Congress and tell him. And so he self-funded his own expedition in 18, 1854 through the central route that they had said they weren't going to survey because Fremont had been there. Well, he didn't think Fremont had given a perspective of a railroad person. 
So he self-funded an expedition on his way back to Washington, did that expedition, rode it. And so in 1857, Frederick Lander was hired as an engineer to, to be a part of this Pacific Wagon, improve, Pacific Wagon Road Improvement Project. In 1857, he surveyed all through the valley, Green River Valley and, and over in, into Idaho and found a route that he thought was better. In 1858, he come back and they built that road, um, built it in one summer under budget and in time, which impressed everybody. He was becoming very famous he was already famous in the East, but he was becoming very famous in California because he was this champion of not only railroads, but he had helped with all the building of these roads. So in 1860, he came back out to, to work on the roads, but he brought his soon-to-be bride with him, Jean Margaret Davenport. Jean Margaret, Dav Jean Margaret Davenport was an English actress who from the age of of eight years old had been acting because her parents were actors and she, her parents brought her to the United States and she became a superstar actress in the United States as a child. So by the time, the, by this time when Lander meets her, um, they, she's one of the most famous actresses on the East Coast. Because of her connection to uh, Lander, she becomes very famous on the West Coast. They end up getting married in the fall of 1860 in the San Francisco area, I think San Jose. And so that was big news on both coasts. His, his legend just keeps growing. And by the spring of 1861, this, the, the Civil War had started. And of course he wants to be part of the, of the action. And so by March, he's resigned his, his post as for the Pacific Wagon Roads. He's joined the military. By May, he's joined as a volunteer. By May, he's a general. Uh, the brigades were, there was a couple Union brigades broke into two regiments that were meant to try to encircle the Confederate army that was there in that community. This is in West Virginia. And um, all the, the generals sitting on the hill looking down have realized that, that Kelly, who was in charge of one of the regiments, has missed, has gone to the wrong road and the, the Confederates are going to get out of there. And so Frederick Lander takes it upon himself to ride down this steep hill that everybody called a, a death-defying ride down this hill. And so he rode down this hill at high speed and went down and got with Kelly. And he was part of that battle there. Kelly got kill or got shot in that battle so was wounded but Frederick Landers credited with writing down the guy who shot him and capturing him and he became a prisoner of war um, so this was witnessed by a lot of people it was the first battle so it was a big deal and so Frank Leslie's illustrated when they wrote about that that uh, battle they did an illustration that shows Lander writing down this this steep hill this death defying stunt that he had done even greatly more greatly elevating his status in in the public culture now um, later on in october he was finally given control or be given charge of some troops and he was part of the, the battle of edmunds edwards ferry and uh, he was wounded in the leg at that place and he never really recovered from that he died in march of 1862 um, probably from complications from that leg wound, but maybe from pneumonia. Uh, but he passed away way too early. Um, it was a major news to the whole country when he passed away. It was only the second general that died in service of the Civil War. Um, when they had his funeral in Washington, D.C., the procession, uh, there was 20,000 people that lined up the streets to, to see the procession of his body going by. J Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln went to the funeral. That's how big a deal it was. And so that really ended a superstar career. And it's, it's interesting to think what might have happened. What would he have done next? Because by 1865, the Transcontinental Railroad is finally passed and they're building the Transcontinental Railroad. He's one of the preeminent railroad engineers in the country at that point. Not only that, he's really famous. Um, he actually had mentored Grenville Dodge, who became the, head, the kind of the lead engineer for the Union Pacific part of the railroad. He had mentored him as a young boy. There was about, he was about 10 years older, and he actually got him into the railroad engineer business and got him uh, into the same college that he had went to, the same military college. And so it's, you know, would he have been one of the leading engineers on the Transcontinental Railroad? I think so. Would he have gone into politics because he was so famous? I think it's possible. Although I'm not sure he would have liked that. But 
anyway, he's just a remarkable man. Uh, the little the trail that he built out here was just one of those components of of a huge Western career, and uh, it's it's fun to read about his life and his story.